From the Ministry of Health and Social Development, I'm Public Health Communication Specialist Natasha Letson. Today we're in the field with the Environmental Health Vector Control Unit Division as we continue to educate the community with regards to chikungunya and the dengue viruses. An important part of our quest to lower our vulnerability to these viruses lies in preventing mosquito breeding. So it only made sense that we tagged along today with the vector control team as they go out within the community to inspect our premises to see what exactly they're looking for and what we collectively as a community can come together to do to ensure we reduce our mosquito breeding sites in and around our community. So I invite you to really sit back, relax, enjoy the program and really take note to some of the vital information that we'll be sharing with you today. So we're out with the vector control unit of the Environmental Health Department and what they're doing essentially is going house to house to ensure that there are not any mosquito breeding sites within premises. They go to the premises, number one, they try to gain access, speak with some of the householders with regards to coming onto the premises to conduct their inspections. They look around totally the entire premises to see what breeding sites or what issues they may have within the property and then they go ahead and conduct their inspections and also they educate the homeowner or the renter, the person that's occupying the land um, of what should be done to reduce mosquito breeding sites. If you need your water, you don't need to throw the water away. No, just cover it up. All you need to do is get some cloth mm -hmm. or some plastic Okay, or crocus or whatever, you just tie it down. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. When you need the water, you just okay. take it off. Keep the mosquitoes from going in. To keep the mosquitoes from, from getting in there. Oh, I have no problem. Not do that. Because you can guarantee that you leave that there for another week. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have breeding taking place. Okay. Anybody at home with chicken going here yet? Anybody around the neighborhood? Well, there you go. Now, if you have mosquitoes breeding there and she has it, mm -hmm. Right? You're or anybody sure. else? You're ensure it comes from there either. Cause I just, be, I just use that all the time. Constantly. But even if you even if you're using it all the time and mm. the mosquitoes are breeding there, mm. you know they will as you say come out of the water. Okay. No they'll go bite somebody, sick mm. downstairs, mm -hmm. and, and then they will come upstairs and give you a shot of the of the disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so do that for us. You have to do that almost like now, you know. And now. I got some stuff up my store and do it now. Yeah. I'll do that right now. And no I got some other jump up on my uh, land up there, but I got them covered down. Yeah. The ply. No, but so you see, by the same time I'm saying, you see this like a ply board, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Because the ply board is not going to sit that perfectly is. flush Around. on that. Mm -hmm. okay. You understand? Okay. And all they need is just a little opening to get, to inside. get into, into, into okay, no the drum. Okay. So you really need to cover it down and tie it down, <clears> whatever you put. Whether it is the wire netting ah, or okay. mosquito I'll do screening. I'll do that now, yeah. Yes, I'll do that so run for us. And the one up there as yeah. well. But well, you see this one here? Mm. You see these rotoplastic tanks? Mm. They're also perfect for breeding mosquitoes. So what, 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 the so what did I do? My, my job last night mm. was to empty mine out, mm. clean it out. Mm. I got electrical tape and, a hole. and I taped up that overflow hole there. But I know that cover, it doesn't sit flush. It's a good cover, but it doesn't sit flush. So once a week, I have to make sure I take a look in there to see if there are any mosquitoes Inside. breeding in that. And if you use the water, you will see them, you'll see the regulars coming through. Because oh, okay. that's how I know if mosquitoes get into mine. Mm. When I open it up to take some water for whatever, mm. the regulars will come through because they're usually in the at the bottom. bottom. Yes, so they come through the, the pipe. Okay. So that's how you know. But you have to make sure you inspect that once a week because okay. the mosquito cycle is seven days. Okay. From the time the mosquito lays its eggs, which it will do right around the water's edge here, mm. to when it becomes an adult, seven days. So you leave that there for seven days and you can have mosquitoes. Okay. And you have somebody sick downstairs or maybe close by, and that person is going to 
be the host for the mosquito mm. to get the virus, uh -huh. the chikungunya virus mm. or the dengue virus, sure, yeah. and then come right upstairs and give it to you. Okay, sure. I don't want you to get dengue or chikungunya. No, I don't so do that for me. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Excellent. Septic tanks can be a, a major breeding ground for mosquitoes. And we know that the Aedes mosquito, although this is not its natural habitat, but if it's under pressure, it will gravitate towards septic tanks. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a septic tank like this, as you can see, with a plyboard cover over the manhole, obviously it's not protected, it's not sealed. So the mosquitoes are free to enter and exit. So just imagine that the inspector did not catch that and treat it. Mm -hmm. How long it would have been breeding until it would be caught. And so obviously, with all of this breeding taking place, and we know that there is chicken gonia circulating right here in this area, then we have a vulnerable premises. And imagine a number of other premises just like this, mm -hmm. with other problems added to that. So what exactly is he treating the septic with right now? Well, he's using what you call anti-malarial oil. Mm -hmm. So it's a derivative of a uh, petroleum product. And this will simply sit on the water for about 72 hours. Mm -hmm. It will suffocate the mosquitoes because remember the mosquito has to come up to breathe. Mm -hmm. It will not be able to penetrate the surface of the water with its breathing tube and so it will suffocate and at the same time it will ingest some of the chemical which will destroy its gut so it will die either way it will break down in 72 hours so there is no lingering effect on the environment if let us say we choose to use it in another place say like a pond and we purchase this particular kind of product especially because if we're treating ponds we don't want the product to linger Mm -hmm. in the mangrove because of course it begins to discolor the mangrove and it doesn't look good and it is not uh, a good way to treat the environment so we use a product that will dissipate in 72 hours mm -hmm. and return the environment to its natural habitat from then on now in terms of persons who may live at this premises now what do you tell them you come here you treat their septic tank is that it well, right now, right now, we would have issued a, a notice. So the inspector would have written up a notice that would have been slipped through the door. And with that would be a checklist. And the checklist would have that checked off and would give the, the householder directions as to what to do to correct this problem and protect the the septic tank and the same thing for any other kind of problem that would have been found on the premises it will be checked off mm -hmm. on the notice and the checklist with instructions on how to correct the problem mm -hmm. now in terms of education for persons who may have a premises with this same issue what would you tell them is the correct thing to do with regard to this opening here well i think i should not even be telling someone that if you have a septic tank that you need a concrete cover you know, maybe what I should be advising is that you need a tight-fitting concrete manhole cover. Because sometimes you may make a manhole cover that is not sitting properly, it's rocking. And so the little spaces between the cover and the, the slab will allow for the mosquitoes to enter and exit. Mm -hmm. So we need a tight-fitting manhole cover on all septic tanks, not boards. You know, because obviously they're going to rot, mm -hmm. you know, and so anything can go in there, including the mosquitoes. And we find a lot of those. Mm -hmm. And we find people even using, you know, sheets of board on, on drums and, and barrels and so forth. Mm -hmm. These are not going to keep mosquitoes out, you know, so we need tight fitting covers in the case of drums and barrels. We need them to cover those containers with crocus or with, with cloth or mm -hmm. plastic and tie them down and keep them covered. Premises inspections are done in, in two phases. There is the interior inspection and there is the exterior inspection. The first thing the inspector needs to do is to make contact with the householder, if present. Now let us assume that at this particular premises the householder is present. He would be trying to make entry into the premises. 
so we can determine whether there are any floor pots or floor vases on the inside. That's what you'll, you'll find invariably on the inside. And depending on the condition, whether it is a potential mosquito breeding ground or an actual mosquito breeding ground, then he will offer advice to the householder. Once he's done that, he's going to try to get the householder to come out with him or her to do the exterior of the premises because on the exterior you will figure out whether for example the overflow pipe as you can see here for the cistern is covered this one is covered mm -hmm. so that's fine you will figure out whether the manhole cover as you tried to explain some time back is properly fitted mm -hmm. you will try to determine whether there are any containers whether drums or barrels or rotoplastic tanks whether any of them, if they are present on the property, are potential mosquito breeding grounds and if anything can be done to protect them. You will determine the level of sanitation, that's very important. Because folks might have a lot of containers, unwanted containers, they just have them strewn around the premises for whatever reason. They put it there maybe to take them away and just left them there. So if it's a question of sanitation where you have unwanted containers, you're going to try to encourage the householder to clean up, mm -hmm. to remove those containers, get them to the dump if they are too large to go into the, into the waste receptacles. And eventually when you work your way around the yard, you will have identified any problems. You will have given the person advice on the spot mm -hmm. and you would have hopefully given that person enough information so they can correct the problems. Now they may not be able to correct the problems immediately so we have a regime where the house would be flagged as a high-risk premises. So the inspectors would record that information as such. Subsequently, one of the senior inspectors, preferably the supervisor or his assistant, will come back out maybe in a week's time mm -hmm. and do a reinspection to see whether there is any compliance. And if there is still no compliance, that is when that file, so to speak, will come to me for, for follow-up given that this is my area. Mm -hmm. If it's another district, then the file would go to the, the district officer who would be a trained environmental health officer mm -hmm. because an environmental health officer would be the one who has the capacity for legal enforcement of which there are various ways in which we can enforce regulations to have people comply with the instructions of the vector control officers. Now, we go into house to house, premises to premises to conduct your inspection. How receptive are the homeowners if you should happen upon them? And, and if they're not, what would you like to say in terms of trying to get to the public for them to be a little more easy mm. with you and, and try to be more receptive to the information you're sharing? Well, I mean, almost 100% of, of householders that you come upon are receptive in the sense of enabling the inspection. Okay. People will not hustle you off the property. I mean, of, of course, you will find individuals who probably are in a bad mood or maybe had some experience the day before and they will take it out on you. Mm -hmm. And so if you identify that you're not doing your job because, you know, the, the person's mental state is such that you can't get through to him anyway, then you let it fly, you know, and you will give it another chance sometime in the future. But we don't have a problem with people allowing us to do inspections. Our problem is compliance, because they will agree that it is necessary to cover this container, to throw this one away, to seal this one, whatever we ask them to do. But we may come back to do the reinspection, as I say, in a week's time, and we'll find that it's not done in many instances. So our problem is not doing the inspection. The problem is compliance. And that is why we constantly have to repeat our cycles of inspections to get people to comply, to encourage people to comply. Mm -hmm. no, so do you have any success stories that you could share with us in terms of people who have done a good job complying? Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 the one that comes to mind readily is Virgin Gorda. I mean, I went to Virgin Gorda a few days ago after our inspectors started doing the daily inspections and I was following the upsurge of chikungunya cases there. And my responsibility was to follow up on the, the jobs that the inspectors were doing, you know. 
to determine whether there was any compliance. And I walk into this circle of, of premises and there were people, I don't know how many people, maybe six, seven, eight people cleaning up, mm. burning the trash. Somebody directed me to a, to a cistern, as I explained earlier, with a, with a, with a sheet board covering the manhole. And although it was not his responsibility, he said that he was going to get it fixed because there were a number of people in that circle who already contracted chikungunya. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was amazed. I don't think I have seen that often enough in, in the territory. So that is a success story that I, that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. And it was only brought about, I think, because of the fact that so many people became infected on, on Virgin Gorda. But I would not like to see the same level of infestation of the mosquito and the same level of infection of people on Tortola for us to begin to respond like the Virgin Guardians did, you know, which they are doing right now because our inspectors are still there mm -hmm. since there are probably a couple of days work left to be done on Virgin Gorda. Mm -hmm. Well, an excellent story. Uh, we appreciate all the work that you're doing in Virgin God. I keep up the good work. And we continue to encourage persons in and around the territory, all the islands, to do your part to reduce mosquito breeding. To tell the, the difference between the Aedes mosquitoes and the, the Culex, it depends on the breeding tube of the mosquitoes and the way that they stand while breeding. If they're at a 40, 45 angle, which means you can tell that that's a uh, 80s because the breathing tube is short. It will start at 45 degrees. At the, the, it could the breathing tube could be out of the water. If it's at 90 degrees, which means the culex, because the breathing tube is much longer. So what exactly are we seeing? Are we seeing 80s or well, right right now it's 80s mosquitoes? If you have an 80s mosquito, look at my finger. You have an 80s mosquito, right? It has a it is a short breathing tube, right, like this. So therefore, for you to get the tube through the water to breathe, it has to bend itself like that. Mm. But now, imagine that my whole hand is the culex. That's a long breathing tube. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to bend itself. You can just push the water through. So that's the difference between the 90 degrees and the 45 degrees. So the inspectors will be able to detect through the angle, whether it is the culex or whether it is the Aedes, by looking at the tube, which you can actually see with your naked eyes. So that's more for the technicians like these guys to be able to, to learn their craft and identify different types of mosquitoes. Because of course, as you know, if you don't identify the mosquitoes correctly, you'll be using the wrong treatment. Mr. Israel, we would like to thank you for allowing us to tag along with you today. As you know, we, you gave us first-hand information and you showed our viewing audience what exactly you do, how you conduct your, your premises evaluations, and you know how you seek to educate the community with regards to mosquito breeding. Now, to leave our viewers at home with a few tips, tell us once again what they should be vigilant looking for within their premises in and around their community. Okay. What we are trying to encourage the community to do is their part of the bargain. We are responsible as vector control unit to do all of the public places. But for the breeding taking place in the homes, we want, we want our residents to look at the roof guttering to ensure that it's not clogged. We want them to take a look at the, the cisterns to ensure that the manhole covers are fitted properly that the overflow pipes are netted, covered over. We want them to take a look at any potted plants that might have been overly watered, you know, with, with, the, with the saucers under them full of water. These need to be emptied out. Mm -hmm. We want them to take a look at the flower vases that are probably on the inside, you know, in the living room. If the plants are not in dirt, we encourage people to plant. Mm -hmm. If they must keep their flowers in water that they they use ornamental stones and have the water under the stone so the mosquitoes cannot get to mm -hmm. the, the water. A lot of people have cut plants. I encountered a number of premises in the last hour or so where people have cut plants. They're catching whatever plants. 
and they have the plants in a big bucket with a lot of water and even though they're not breeding, the likelihood of breeding is, is very, very good. We want people again to use gravel and just have the water under the gravel with the cut plants so that they do not breed. We want people to take a look at the septic tanks as well. You know, the uncovered septic tanks where the manhole covers are broken or off to have them properly fitted, properly seated, you know, on the manhole itself. And we want to ensure that the entire septic tank is, is sealed, mm -hmm. that there are no openings or vent pipes to allow the mosquitoes to enter and exit because the dengue and chikungunya mosquito will breed in those tanks, especially if they cannot find you know, more suitable breeding grounds in the area. We want them to take a look at their rotoplastic tanks or their drums and the barrels that they keep you know, for whatever purposes, watering the yard or maybe for any household uses, to have those containers covered, you know, with sackcloth or crocus or, or plastic and have them tied down. Because they're not using the water all the time, so you uncover those containers when you need the water, you cover them back. And things will happen and they will get uncovered, but we are encouraging people to, to at least spend a few minutes once a week to just take a look around because given the cycle of the mosquito from egg to adult, if you do that once a week, you will catch the mosquito breeding and you will take care of the mosquito breeding. Now just in case persons aren't aware why the once a week is so important, enlighten them for us a bit. Okay, if a mosquito lays an egg in an artificial container, I'm talking about the Aedes mosquito that carries the dengue and the chikungunya, it will lay eggs in artificial containers, such as I've, ex I've, I've explained already. The mosquito will lay its eggs and in seven days that egg will hatch, it will become a wriggler, it will become a pupa in which the adult mosquito will develop and the adult will emerge and fly off. Seven days. So we are saying that if you, if you make it a habit to take a look at any containers you have that might have water, that might be allowing the mosquito to breed once a week, then obviously you're going to catch the mosquito before it becomes an adult because you don't want it to become an adult, at which point in time it might begin to, to bite infected people with dengue and chikungunya and spread the diseases around. If you catch a mosquito in the aquatic stage while in the water, then there's no chance of the mosquito becoming a carrier of the viruses. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely a key point that we want everybody to be aware of as we strive to reduce mosquito breeding. Now this is definitely a huge task for your team and we appreciate you guys so much. So just tell us and give us um, an idea of who your team are so we could the public will know who they are when they see them traversing their property. Well, this is just half of our team here. We have another half right now in, in Virgin Gorda right now, but right now you have our newest trainee here, mm -hmm. who is Kyron Chong. We have the assistant supervisor over here, who is Marlon Thomas. You have the supervisor, who is Joseph Seeley, and Jennifer Springett. And every week we have a, an environmental health trainee working with us. And today we have Mr. Fred. So he's our trainee today. Off on Virgin Gorda right now, we have David Tyson and David Nibs. And they are, they are pretty much working the whole week on Virgin Gorda. And I'm the program manager of the, of the unit. And I come out every so often to lend them support on the field. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Idriel. You're very welcome. Now, as we continue to advocate to the community to reduce mosquito breeding, we want you to really take to heart some of the things that we have learned today and do your best to protect yourself, your family, each other, our community, as we strive to lower our vulnerability to the chikungunya and dengue viruses. Reporting for the Ministry of Health and Social Development and Public Health Communication Specialist, Natasha Letzel. Chikungunya, clean up your yard and throw away your trash. Chiki chiki, chikungunya, them mosquito, them biting me hard. Chiki chiki, chikungunya, I don't want no fever, I don't want to bug. Chiki chiki, chikungunya.